morning, everyone. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanks to our Almighty God for sustaining our lives in the midst of uncertainties. And thanks to Don Les Woolwood for giving me this privilege to share the Word of God. Thanks to all the viewers, wherever you are, no matter what you are going through, may God bless you and give you peace, joy, and His presence. Today's meditation is taken from the book of Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 to 11. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 to 11. Here it says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought the work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marked in the hand of the potter. So he made it again and another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull out, and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good, wherewith I said I will benefit them. Now therefore go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will frame evil against you, and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way, and make your ways and your doings good. This is the word of God. Shall we all look to God in prayer? Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we come before you in your mighty throne of grace. The words, the meditations, everything be acceptable in your sight. Be with us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The book of Jeremiah is written about Judah, who miserably failed to live a life according to their covenant with God. And Judah, in the days of Jeremiah, was a nation that has forgotten and forsaken God. For 40 years, Jeremiah had been witnessing the miseries of the nations, chaos spreading throughout the land, corruption widespread in government, morality constantly declining, evil infecting the people. The life of the nation is gradually becoming more and more miserable. At that time, the forces of Babylon were set to invade Judah. Here we see that the nation is facing national miseries but it is more of spiritual misery and that's the reason they were constantly facing failures from their positions even among themselves but despite of all Judah's condition God is still counting and including Judah in unfolding his plan and purpose and it is reminding us today that does God forsake Judah or, or does God did not listen to the petitions? Throughout the prophet Jeremiah's time, God unfolds his mission by giving the message of hope and grace to those who are in miseries. And today we are witnessing the havoc of pandemic COVID-19. It seems like life is going to be unending troubles, tribulations, miseries, and so on. For the world, it is miserable. But for God, it's a platform to display His mission. God's mission is beyond seeing, understanding, and beyond the circumstances around. He is not accomplishing His mission yet. But today, Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, reminds us three wonderful truths to understand God's mission to the miserable. The first thing is, God is still reforming lives. God is still reforming lives. Verses 1 to 6. And chapter 18 begins 
with God's commission to Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house and learn the lessons of the potter and the clay. Here the potter is portrayed as God. And the potter is a personal God. God who has all the power, perfect plan, and patiently walking over the clay. And God as the potter has already in his mind the finished product. And as the potter was shaping the board in, in his hand, some fell apart on him and it did not take a good shape. And verse 4 describes marred or damaged. Maybe the clay was too hard or too soft or anything it could be. But remember that the potter doesn't throw it away. He picked it and started to reshape and make a new form until it turns out into his intended shape. God is still reforming the miserable situation of Judah. And God is still reforming our lives in many ways. Sometimes we feel low, disappointed, that discouraged, we feel destroyed. But there is a message of hope that God can still reform us in a miserable situation. He can turn the misery into message. We may fall apart, but God put it together. All of this is because God is still accomplishing his mission in our lives. Even human disobedience, destruction, could be still God's construction and God's reformation for our lives. And God is interested in reforming the lives of the individual, the lives of the community. We are reminded of William Carey, the father of modern mission. Before he came to India, he faced failures in marriage, health, many things, rejected for ordination for two years while giving the first sermon, and that made him to reform himself. And we may ask, why God? Why these problems? Why these sufferings? We may ask, why me, Lord? But one thing is assured that God is interested in reforming our lives. He is able to turn tragedy into triumph, the void into victory, and mess into message, sorrows into joy. The border is still working on the will. The will represents our lives. Some lives are shorter, some lives are longer. But the important is on the center of the will. If our life is centered in God's hand, we are still reformable. Even if it is not in center, there is still a chance of resurrendering in God's hand. The question is, do we allow God to change our lives, to reform our lives? Do we allow God to change our character, our attitude into His likeness? The second thing is, God is still repairing us. God is still repairing people's life from verses 7 to 10. The word repair is to correct or rectify. The prophet Jeremiah warns the coming disaster if they continue to resist God. And Judah at the time yet for, uh, forgotten and forsaken God completely. And no longer God was kept in the center of their lives. And as a result of forsaking and forgetting God, they will be plucked out, they will be pulled down and destroyed. But God still gives and grants a favorable condition that if the people of Judah repent, God will relent the destruction that is to be taking place. If they repent and completely turn from their evil ways, God will plan it again, pull her up and build it again so that Judah may grow and bring plenty of fruits. Yes, it is written in the form of architecture and agricultural setting that the architecture and agriculturists will know and were well aware about the plans and the construction of the building. It may be damaged, it may be demolished, but they still have an optional strategies for the growth of the plants and for the reconstruction of the building. And verse 10, it is about the message of hope. 
the message of grace, and this will happen through the decision of a person and through the decision of a nation. Choosing to repent or choosing to reject, it is the solemn responsibility of man's side. And a person or a nation can make decision about life and death. There are times that we have experienced the valley of darkness, the valley of uncertainties, and would like to give up in lives and ended with an ending and ending questions. But God is even more faithful to listen to us, even more faithful even in times of our unfaithfulness. This last year, we had a webinar organized by Ravi Chakras in the National Ministry on Kintsuji. It's a beautiful story of broken lives being restored, broken yet beautiful. Kintsuji is used by Japanese in which the broken pieces of pottery were restored into the most precious thing. Kintsuji means golden repair, repairing true gold. They restore the broken pieces of pottery by using the three sap for sticking and dusting with powdered corn. After the finish, the repairing, they could clearly identify the corn lining around the broken pieces of the pot. It does not hide when it displays the crack of the ceramic. It is not shown as a new product, but it is shown as a repaired product. The Japanese celebrate each potter's unique history by focusing the broken pieces of the clay pot. And when it is repaired, it is even more beautiful than the original and it gives the best look and the most beautiful look. Patrick reckoned, Bennett in Bouncing Forward said, I have sat in the dark with my own shame, feeling like I have failed and beyond repair. And I don't want anyone else to feel that I can help it. And if God is in restoration business, I want to align my values with His and to do all I can see His kingdom come on earth now. That means I need to remember that no one, even me, is the last cause. And as we face this miserable pandemic since from 2020, Many have gone through trauma, economic breakdown, racism, injustice, discrimination, exclusion, and many other things. People today have experienced excruciating pain, illness, loss within the individual family and the community. But everything, when it brings into the mighty hand of God, it became a transformation aspect of God's mission in our lives. And sometimes we may think that we have done mistakes, we have done uh, miseries, we have scars, stains, and sometimes tend to think that life is nothing and life doesn't mean anything. But our brokenness can speak millions to the people and can bring blessings to the people around. All of us were at the point somehow somewhere we were miserable and the word of God says from 2nd Corinthians 5 17 says if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation and God is still interested in repairing miserable lives and to turn it into something beautiful and worthwhile product people may see you broken but God sees your new beginning. He finds your values, dignity, and identity. And here God was giving a message of second chance to the people of Judah that if they repent, repairing work is not a burden for God, but it's become a passion for God's mission. The third thing is God's goal for people to return to Him. In verse 11, it says, Now therefore go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you, and devise a device against you. Return ye now, 
return everyone from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. Return is to turn back. God used the prophet Jeremiah to tell the people of Judah to turn to him. And that's the only option for Judah to escape from the coming disaster, turning away from evil and turning to Yahweh. And God is working in each and every situation to return to him before it is late. God wants everybody to return to him. But yeah, chapter 16 and the preceding chapters were chapters about talking about returning to God how much it is important necessity to return to God before it is too late and here is also a warning point that any nation or any individual can be a, at the point of no return if it is too late God is still calling people to return to him it was in my childhood time, there is an uncle who engaged in pottery works, narrated how the pot is making. He narrated the process of making a pot. First of all, the pot needs to be powdered with the ceramic clay and super time rock. And there he mix with water in the right proportion and bake it flat, kept for four to five hours. Then he placed the lump of clay in the spinning wheel and as he started to make in between many times it was cut to shape it and sometimes it doesn't turn out to the shape that he intended he said as long as the clay is soft we can still make it again and as he make it again some of the pots were much more finer and better and there is more to be done even after making a pot the potter for days and took it for furnacing. He says, unless the God, when the pot goes for furnacing, none of the pots can be used. The pots were furnacing for smoothening, shining, and long lasting. At the end of the day, the pot was turned out to be a useful and a beautiful vessel. And he said, likewise, is our life the same? as we make a pot like God is also making us and today the pots in our place were not only serving the purpose of cooking but also served in multi-purpose ways the indigenous, indigenous pottery has started gaining prominence in the international markets and owing to its intricate designs and technology and it preserved traditional values of our forefathers and it becomes a source of living for many people and many of the dropout youngsters were employed in the pottery work however they were privileged to participate in the exhibition program held at different occasions and some were awarded for the artistic skills and development likewise we are made to serve and expose to the world as an agent of God's mission Amidst of all miserable lives around us, when we allow God to reform us, when we allow God to repair us and to return to Him, the challenge is, will you allow God to accomplish His mission in our lives? Will you allow God the Father to reform you, repair you, and you be ready to return to the Lord? And God the Father is even more ready to accomplish his mission in your lives and today we as a community of faith is to live a sharing life sharing our lives by spending time alone with god in solidarity and in unity with the weak and sick ones oppressed and marginalized and those who are going through terrible and miserable times whatever ways we can share are not in vain so that our life can be a life that which would place the epicenter of God's mission and also exhibit God's mission and our life can be a life of reformation, repairing people's life and leading people to return to the Lord. And that's a wonderful mission of God. Let us remember that 
We are God's mission worker as a useful vessel to serve others in every possible way. So we all look to the Lord in prayer. Have your ways in us, O oh Lord, in these miserable times. May you reform us, repair us, and return to you each day, each moment. And Lord, may you continue to establish your work, your mission on this earth. And Lord, have us to be found faithful unto you until you come and take us back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you all. Thank you.